Welcome to Viral Facts. Today, I'm delighted to introduce you to my friend and colleague for about three decades, Dr. Bonnie Maldonado. And Dr. Maldonado is internationally known for her work in, in pediatric infectious diseases and also in epidemiology. So let me switch to this question. Uh, the parents who are listening, who have made their decision that they are gonna get their child vaccinated and they're signing up at their pediatrician's office, what, what should those parents expect uh, and what should they do starting tomorrow? Yeah, so absolutely. So let me just tell you what we saw happen with the clinical trials, which I think in a way were, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a test for how families would be involved. Now, I have to say that these families who came in for the trials were so enthusiastic. They were just really excited and um, motivated to have their children vaccinated. And they engaged with their children um, at an age appropriate level to let them understand what would be happening. So the children, uh, by and large, even the little ones were aware that something really important was gonna happen and they were not fearful at all. And a lot of this, as we know, was pediatricians with other vaccine products is when you prepare your children before you come into the office, um, they can be ready and know what to expect. Um, but uh, the best time, some people have actually asked us, well, this vaccine is a third of the dose and it's given to five to 11 year old children, but a higher dose is given to 12 year olds. What should I do if my child is 10 or 11? Should I wait till my child turns 12 to get the higher dose? And we really don't encourage that. We want children to be protected right now. We know that the immune responses to this current dose in the five to 11 year olds is as good as the one that's given to the 12 year olds and above. So we would like to see children protected now. We want children to go back to school feeling safe and comfortable. We know that there are two doses, three weeks apart. The vaccines really take full effect two weeks after the second dose. So you're really talking about a five week period but before your child is fully protected. And while masking and distancing really help, having that extra layer of protection from the vaccine is really important and can give you that extra security, especially um, as the fall and winter seasons are here and people are indoors more, crowding together more, and may not be able to mask and distance as well. And we also are thinking about the holidays when families are going to get together. We want to make sure that children as well as adults are protected. Uh, we also want people to know that right now there's only one vaccine available for children uh, between five and 18 years of age, and that is the Pfizer vaccine, although um, the Moderna and J&J &J vaccines may be available for uh, younger children in the coming year, in 2022. Uh, we know that um, there are side effects to this vaccine, but they are manageable side effects, and um, that the children uh, should be able to get better uh, from side effects within a day or so and generally don't require any extra care. Um, if the child has a low grade fever, they may have to stay home, uh, but otherwise um, they, can, uh, deal, they can handle the side effects pretty well. Um, and they are not contagious. Now that is a, another issue that's come up that is complete misinformation that children who are vaccinated are contagious or, have, or carry some unsafe vaccine products. Now the vaccine is, pretty unstable actually. It needs to be refrigerated because it can disintegrate pretty quickly. But as soon as it's injected, it does, it's, uh, it does enter the, the human cell. It doesn't go near the genetic material, the chromosomes or the DNA. Um, it stays in the uh, peripheral part of the cell and, and is a template for developing spike protein. Um, it then uh, disintegrates, it's gone. It does not, uh, cause actual infection with any human or live or, uh, uh, or vi viral or animal particles. These are completely synthetic pieces of protein that uh, are produced in response to the vaccine. And so nobody is contagious from the vaccine. We also know that there was a misinformation rumor going around that the vaccine could cause infertility or reproductive uh, problems and that is absolutely false. It's um, it's been completely disproven, and so we want to reassure people that that does not happen. 
and has not been, not only has it not been proven, but it has been proven to be a wrong um, assumption. Um, and so again, one last thing is for people to realize when they come in, uh, they will uh, need to read the vaccine information statement, which goes over why the vaccine is being used and goes over side effects. Um, and uh, then the dose is given, uh, usually in the arm. The child can also get all of their other vaccines that they need to, do, to get. So we also noticed during the pandemic that um, some children didn't get their normal childhood vaccines. And we are behind as a country in our routine immunizations, especially for measles and HPV vaccines. So if children need their other vaccines, they can get them at the same time, preferably in, in the other arm. Um, and uh, then they are, you know, then we can uh, avoid other vaccine preventable infections. The child will then come back three weeks later to get the second dose of their vaccine. And then two weeks after that, they will be fully protected. So it sounds like bottom line is that if one has a child five years of age or older, the best time to get vaccinated against COVID is now. Absolutely. Um, and I can't tell you how excited uh, families and pediatricians are to uh, make sure that children are safe for this holiday season. Dr. Maldonado, thank you so much for your contribution to controlling the pandemic, for all of the work you've done. Thank you. Thanks, Bonnie.